Well, we better be talking about relationships today because it's our all about relationships show here on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. I'm Debbie Giorgiani with Jerry Escher and you. You are the person we count on to call in and share your your lived experiences so that we can learn, we can grow, we can get a little bit closer to God. Don't get started with your weekend yet. It's happy Friday to you. We need you to weigh in on your most uh, loved and wonderful, precious relationships we want to talk about it. We want to have that conversation in the virtual living room of Take Two where we can sit and learn and grow. So please call in and Jerry will happily give you the number. Hi, Jerry. Yeah, it's, Hey, Debbie. Good to have you uh, back for the second day following the funeral. Things are getting back to normal here on the show. We're grateful for that. And what is normal, as Debbie said, is for you to call in and share your takes, your wisdom, your lived experiences as we talk all about relationships today at 833-288-EWTN, 833-288-3986. Eight, six. And when you hear the topic of the show, you might be inclined, you might be tempted to think, well, they want to talk about bad relationships, how we can make them better. Well, if you're struggling with any relationship, absolutely call in. But maybe you found the key to success in your marriage. You know, maybe you had some problems and you worked some of those things out. Or maybe your relationships are all in right order and you would just like to call and share how thankful you are to God for that. 833-288-3986. Talking about relationships, I want to talk to the Take Two family, if I may, Jerry, just for a moment. You guys have been sending in su- such beautiful prayer cards, sympathy cards, uh, comments, um, emails, uh, letters. Uh, thank you so very much. The condolences and the sympathies, we very much um, appreciate all of them and the prayers, especially, especially for my mom, um, Connie, and the repose of her soul. But, you know, I just wanted to say, please forgive me because um, I'm a little bit trying to tie up all the loose ends and things that are happening, and I'm, I'm unable to really respond properly back to you. So just please know that I, from the deepest, deepest uh, parts of my heart, uh, the same with Marty. I can represent Marty and my whole family. Um, we are we just are so grateful for the fact that you care and that you love us so very much. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope this um, is suitable uh, a suitable way to say thank you. I I just cannot. I mean, I'm I'm looking at this, the emails and stuff stacking up, Jerry, and I'm you, you know me, Jerry. I'm I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and I'm thinking I'm never going to be able to respond. It's just mm-hmm. it's a good it's a good problem to have, but it's overwhelming. Well, you're very loved, and I think that shows that, and uh, shows what kind of relationship you had with your mom, as we talk all about relationships today, and you with Marty as well. So, dear Take Two family, it's Friday. Debbie says, don't get started with your weekend yet. We need you to call and make this another wonderful broadcast to end uh, a week of what have been really good shows, I believe. 833-288-EWTN, 833-288-EWTN. Three nine eight six. We're talking all about relationships today, so please weigh in if you have something to share about a special relationship. It could be a work relationship, but your neighbors, you know, what's going on in the world, because that's all about relationships as well. Please call in. This is our monthly show where we dedicate it all to those, um, you know, really great interactions that we have with other people. We are meant for community, and so we want to talk about that. So please call in at 833-288-3986. Fill the phone lines, because Charles, Charles Beery is waiting to answer your call. And Charles is awesome. So you will love to speak with him. Real quickly, Jerry, I know on the tease for the show, we talked about relationships and I had brought up that I'm, I'm, I am the youngest of a big family. And I come from a, a birth family of very strong personalities. And um, it's, it's interesting when you, when you grow, when you grow up that way, uh, you're just kind of used to it. But then you see other families, like I see your family, Jerry and other and Marty's family and stuff. And I'm thinking, wow, I really grew up in a it was a pretty tough family because you had so many strong personalities. Anybody else feeling that way that you grew up in a family like you're thinking to yourself, man, this was this was tough to deal with other people's, you know, points of view and and their their strong nature and their defiance and their pride. And who knows, you know, did you grow up with like that, folks? We want to hear from you. I mean, you grew up in a pretty peaceful family i it kind of sounds like that no really? no oh it oh it doesn't um no it was peaceful yeah yeah i mean 
it was dysfunctional. We, we had our issues. <laughs> but I think to, the, to this day, um, my three brothers and I were the four remaining siblings. Um, we have really a great relationship. We're all very like-minded uh, socially and, and morally and, and I think even politically. And so mm-hmm. we, we get along really, really well. But uh, I know a lot of families don't enjoy that particular luxury. So maybe mm-hmm. you are having uh, issues with a sibling or something right now or a parent, a child, your spouse. Um, doesn't have to be a problem relationship either. Like I said, maybe you have found uh, the key to happiness in a particular relationship and you want to share that with others so they know, have a little bit of an idea what kind of a blueprint they can follow for that. 833-288-3986. And just to tweak what you said a little bit, Debbie, Charles Beery is on the social media today. Rich oh. Jesse's on the phones. Oh, Rich. Oh, and Rich is great to talk to as well. Yeah. Everybody's great to talk to at EWTN. I, I don't think I've ever met a person at EWTN that wasn't wonderful to talk to. In fact, sometimes I call up and we just talk for like 20 minutes. That's how great everybody is. <laughs> No, seriously, it's true. I love everyone at EWTN. They just have fabulous personalities. And so, yes, so Rich Jesse's answering calls. Charles Beery is on social media. Our one and only amazing producer, Michael Birchfield, is at the controls so he can tell us to stop talking at any time. I hope he doesn't do that, though. Has he ever told us to stop talking? Well, not in those exact words, but he tells (laughs) us, you know, you got two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, Mm -hmm. 15 seconds. Yeah, Michael does control the program to a very uh, large extent, so we have to treat Mm -hmm. him nicely, but we want to do that anyway because he's just a really nice guy, a great guy. He is. He is. We have a great team. Okay, phone lines are lighting up. That means you guys are really uh, stepping up, as you always do on Take Two. You are the Take Two family. You're strong, okay? We love you. You do not have to be Catholic to call in. If you are listening, if you just tripped onto the radio station and you're like, what is going on? Is this a call-in show? Is this live? Yes, we are. And we want to hear from you. If you have a relationship you want to talk about, now is the time to do it. We're not going to do a part two because we're going into the weekend. So you got to call in quickly at 833-288-3986. Yes, Debbie said lines are being filled and are being screened as we speak. What happens is if once the lines are full, you can go into a queue. You'll st- still hear the program uh, live uh, on your phone. And then when a, a line becomes available, you will be screened and put in the mix as well. So do join us here, 833-288-3986. All about relationships today. Hi, I'm Monse Alvarado. Friday on EWTN News In Depth, we take a look at the humanitarian crises in Afghanistan and Haiti. And as the new school year begins, the challenges Catholic schools face with COVID Delta variant cases on the rise. Join us for EWTN News In Depth this evening at 8 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on EWTN radio and television. Have you had your free consultation yet with one of our certified life coaches? Schedule one now at StandTallToday.com. Life coaches are trained, caring people who walk side by side with you as you seek to maximize your God-given potential and live your life's purpose with passion. And there's no better place to get started than with a free consultation at StandTallToday.com. That's StandTallToday.com, where you can start to unlock your incredible future. EWTN Radio posts 11 podcasts every weekday and over 60 per week. They're the perfect companion for the busy Catholics everywhere. With on-demand access to audio, you can pause and pick up right where you left off anytime, anywhere, and they're all free. Subscribe by going to EWTNRadio.net, then click on Podcasts. They're waiting for you. EWTN, the global Catholic network. It's Friday, live here on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. We're talk- This is our monthly all about relationships show, and we want you to call in and share about the, that um, special relationship that you're dealing with, that you love. Maybe you don't like it so much. Maybe you want to um, dump it. You know, we can talk about it. That's what we talk about here on Take Two. Everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you got to dial in 833 288 
3986 and speak to Rich. Real quickly, Jerry, I know you want to get to the phones quickly, but I just wanted to highlight this for our listeners. Catholic News Agency, you can rely on CNA to cover the mission and activities of the Catholic Church, including social, political, moral, and cultural issues from a perspective of faith. For the latest Catholic news, visit catholicnewsagency.com. It's an online service from EWTN News, and you can get timely news updates directly to your inbox. This is the part that I love, guys. You can get it to your inbox. So do this. Go visit EWTN.com and click on subscribe and you'll get it. It'll shoot right into your inbox. So you'll always stay current. I love that. Great. We're talking about relationships today with you, the Take-Two family, at 833-288-3986. And as Debbie said, we're going to the phones right now. First up is Tammy, who is on the road in Alabama, listening on Sirius XM 130. Hello, Tammy. Welcome to Take-Two. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. So Go right ahead. I have, yep. an, I have an adult son who, him and his wife, have a girlfriend, and I don't know how to deal with that. Um, okay, say that. Say that again. His your your son and his wife have a girlfriend. Yes, ma'am. Are you are you saying that they that this girlfriend is part of their relationship? Yes. Oh. Oh boy. Well, Tammy, let me ask you first question first because this will help Jerry and I um, in given in t- some some responses. Uh, where is your son with his faith life and his wife? Or are they just they're just what, what do they practice anything? Well, his wife is Catholic. Uh, my son is not Catholic. Uh, my son professes to be a Christian, but okay, and I don't, they he feel doesn't go to church or anything. Okay, and they have somehow they feel this is okay with God. Have they have they have they expressed what, what their philosophy is on this? Oh yeah, they're one big blended family. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's hard to uh, really uh, contemplate what to say about this. I mean, it's 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 an unusual situation. At least I hope it is. I don't know how common this is, but uh, as Debbie was kind of. Uh, going down the road there of of their, what their faith lives and how deep that is, because obviously, you know, if they are very very deep in their faith, uh, they would they would know that this is this is not uh, not in uh, their best interest. It's it's a sinful situation. So um, I I don't know. I just I I suggest lots of prayer, Tammy. Uh, Debbie is big on guardian angels. Everybody has a guardian angel. You have one. Your son has one. His wife has one, and this other lady has one. And I would just, uh, I would call a team meeting with the guardian angels, you know, and say, hey, we really need to get through to uh, your son and his wife and this other lady. And, and hopefully they will be able to bring God's graces to them, and prompt them in the right direction to seek God's will on this, because obviously it is not God's will, uh, the re- relationship that they are involved with. So that's a couple of thoughts that I have on that. Debbie, I don't know if you have anything else, but. Well, I, I completely agree with what you, what you just uh, shared with Tammy. And I just would say this, Tammy, um, the, one of the greatest gifts we've all received is the, is our free will. Okay. From God. And with that right. comes the consequences. It's all about choices and it's all, and then we, and then we, we, um, experience the consequences of our choices, whether they're here on earth or for all of eternity. My heart breaks for your son, his wife, and this other, this other person, because they have chosen a path that it will lead to their destruction potentially here and for eternity in, in a sense, if I'm not judging, but I'm just saying based on, you know, biblical right. principles. So unfortunately you can't, can't, you, you can't force anybody to do anything because then, you know, that would be, that would be coming in onto their free will. What I would, what I would actually say, if you have the opportunity and if you're ever asked is to say, you know, you're making choices, good luck suffering the consequences because that's what happens. I mean, there's only so much you can do, right, Tammy? I mean, I'm sure your heart is breaking right. as the mother. Well, and what's even worse, they're, they're demonstrating to my grandchildren that this is okay. Right. Oh yeah. no. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, have, we have to they pray. Have four children. Well, I've been praying and I'm on my way to visit them and I'm really worried that I'm going to say something and mm-hmm. cause a bigger rift 
you know, mm-hmm. because, I mean, I love them and I want to see them do right, but. Well, yeah, Tammy, you, you very well could say something that would inflame the situation because you're passionate about the, the, you know, the, the wrong that is going on, and, and they might take offense at that, you know, but I would just say, you know, you are the instrument right now in their lives whom God has placed in this situation. I, I'm not going to tell you not to say that, that it's wrong or, or uh, you know, be critical of the, the whole arrangement, but, you know, um, you, you, you really do need to just treat them with love, approach them with love, not approving at all. I'm sure they know by now that you disapprove of this, but somehow, some way, um, by you, you really got to try to, I think, keep the, the relationship, uh, the lines of communication open and healthy between you and them, at least as healthy as it can be, just because you're, the, you're, you're maybe the only one who is going to be, uh, you know, courage, courageous enough to, to tell them what is really right in this situation. So Yeah, the hero. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The hero. Be, yeah. I don't feel like the hero. I know, but, but Tammy, you are because you're holding on to the faith for the family. Think about it. You're a spiritual person. You're a good person. Okay. You're, and, and you're holding on to that for the family and God recognizes that. So stay strong and be the lighthouse. Okay. The lighthouse doesn't move. You stay strong. You can love from your perspective and you can love, you know, trying to, to, to influence them and change them may not, may, may be exactly what could cause a real, you know, explosion. Maybe that's not the right timing of it, but you can be who you are, Tammy, and let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let the Christ light shine through you. Okay. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We're with you, Tammy. We're with you, Tammy. Yeah, okay. Keep a lot posted. of prayers. A lot of prayers go with you, Tammy. Be safe on the road there in Alabama where you're driving. 833-288-3986 is the number talking all about relationships today on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Michelle is up next in Wilmington, North Carolina, listening on Wilmington Catholic Radio. Did I say that right, Michelle? Is that how you say your town? Yes, you said that okay. correctly. It's Michelle, yes. Oh, oh, Michelle, thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks for waiting and welcome. Thank you. Yes, um, I'm conflicted because of my very, very close friends. Her daughter has decided that she believes that she should have been a boy. Mm-hmm. And I saw this coming years ago when the child was like four years old. I was hoping it might turn around, but as she grew, she continued to only want to wear boys' clothes. That continued, and she continued to do that, only boys' toys. I saw this coming, but I was really hoping that the parents could intervene and now this child has now turned to adult age recently and has gone off. And my friend is now calling her daughter by a male's name. I feel conflicted when she talks to me and, and refers to the child by the male's name and uses the pronouns of a male. It's, it's hard for me because this is something I do work in. But it's hard because it's close to home because it's someone, it's your close friend's daughter who is now expressing the same. And now I feel like the parents are just allowing. I know that she's scared because the oldest child, they had set down some strong boundaries and that child rebelled so much so that she didn't speak to them any longer and went to the grandparents and they coddled the wrongdoings and allowed her to do them. They cut her off. So now they're afraid with this child. And I get that, but I just fear that. This is this acceptance is going to allow her to live in this lie that she should have been a boy, and now she's living that. And I just want to know how I can best support my friend because I know that she, she knows that I, we've already had this conversation about how that is not of God, and she's expressed it to, to the daughter that she loves her unconditionally, but now has decided to fall through with all of the requirements that the daughter has placed and saying that, you know, I want to be called this and refer to me as this. So that's where I am right now. Yeah, boy, you're in an unenviable situation, Michelle, um, to say the least. Um, I mean, there's so many things that could be said and maybe you've already said, you know, uh, the Bible is very clear, male and female, he created them. God God does not make mistakes. I just feel like I, I, I asked the question, you know, what has happened with some parents today? 
um, to encourage this kind of thing. You know, I, I believe, I've never had kids, but uh, just what Jesus says about, you know, uh, how, how we treat the little ones, you know, in the Bible, uh, one of the most grievous things to me that a parent can do is not only accept this for their child, but support and encourage it. Um, now that this, uh, this, this lady, this young lady is an adult, um, it, it's probably going to be, you, you might have, you might have even less success in, in, in making a difference in terms of her particular direction, just because uh, she is now an adult. But as far as your friendship with this, with this, uh, uh, the, the girl's mother, um, you said you've had the conversation. I'm sure she knows where you stand on this. Um, she probably is really, uh, you know, going through a lot of, uh, you know, in, in, inner turmoil over this whole thing. And perhaps you can be that rock, that anchor in her life, you know, just be her friend, um, always, uh, you know, with, the, with n- never, you know, letting her, n- never accepting this particular uh, circumstance, but uh, mm-hmm. just be that rock and that anchor in her life. And Debbie, go ahead and I'm just kind of wandering no, no. here on my thoughts but it's it's a tough situation you're 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 caught you're caught because any which way you go um if you if you stand your ground and speak the truth you you possibly could lose a, a really close friend if you if you go along to get along now you're compromising and does that affect you and your own you know conscience so michelle you're caught it's a, it's a you're in a you're in a difficult position i'm curious did you have you taken this to your um, pastor, are you Catholic, Michelle? Are you taking it to your pastor yes, or I'm okay? Catholic. Have you taken it to a priest? She's not, and, but and I am. I'm she's going, not. I'm doing that. She's not, but I am. She's she's a, she's Protestant, but I okay. did plan on talking to the priest. To, I was going to reach out the call and see if I can schedule an appointment to yeah. speak with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Either one of them because it it is mm-hmm. weighing hard on my heart, and she mm-hmm. knows it. She knows the Bible. And this one child was the only child that she did have that actually had up until like two years ago when the other child rebelled, who took Mm -hmm. her down that path. She was the only one that read the Bible. All of her children now won't even read the Bible. They hate anything about the Bible. And Mm -hmm. they've allowed them not to go to church. um, And they have allowed them to set their rules in motion. And I was sitting there telling her, I said, well, you're the parent. Mm-hmm. And I could I could feel the tension, and so I said, "Well, you know, I'm going to pray for you." Um, but they're children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Michelle, but- so so here so here's just a suggestion. I would make an appointment with your priest that you and make sure it's it's a priest that you trust and you understand. You know, his come from, and and you 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 align with that because there are some priests, unfortunately, that you know they're they're a little bit confused on where what what kind of information they're giving out as well. Um, so make sure it's a solid priest that you feel comfortable with, you trust. Sit down with the priest, okay. ask him specifically how should I interact, what should I say, what. What should I do? And then after the priest gives you that good sound advice, I would take it to your friend and say, listen, I consulted my, my priest and you know, this is where I'm at. And I would, I would actually kind of let it defer over to what the priest said, because so this way, maybe you can hold on to your relationship because I, I, I think you're in an unfortunate situation. It's, it's your, 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 it's kind of the old saying, you're damned if you do damned, if you don't, it's a mess. And this is where we're, I think all, a lot of us are facing with family members and extended family members and friends that that are that are choosing different paths that are that are not in alignment with biblical principles and with our faith it's it's creating these walls that are going up and people don't know how to how to kind of navigate around or through them and so it's a mess um so i would i think you're doing the right thing by going to the priest what do you think jerry i think that's a great suggestion and like you said it would be a way to kind of uh, you know, put the, uh, the, the, me- the burden of the message on him a little bit and then preserve that friendship. What do you think, Michelle, about what Debbie was sharing there? No, I, I totally agree because, like I said, I was really wanting to be there because this is an area that I do work in within my field. I don't want to say too much um, because, <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I, this is what I do. And so I know that she confides in me and she believes in me. And I was trying to share with her that because I because we are friends and because I am Catholic and I'm able to extend my beliefs, you know, into this because this is not work. This is fresh. This is a personal relationship. And I was, so I think that's a great idea because I want to talk to my priest and see what, what take 
because I'm, I'm not comfortable when she calls the child by the male's name. And I, I always just say, your, how is your child doing? You know, you're, mm-hmm. and I refer to like th- that way, you know, how, sure. how is your, so I don't want to like cause any more problems, but I do agree with what, what you're saying and you're talk, talking to the priest because I want to know how, I want to know how I can best support her without causing a rift because I do mm-hmm. feel like I am in a position to can still be there for her because I feel like her husband has thrown his hands up mm. Um, mm. and just allowing whatever to happen, which is surprising to me. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Well, Michelle, you hear the music. We have to pause just briefly here. We'll we'll let you go on that because uh, we hopefully uh, what Debbie and, and I have shared will be a, a little bit help to you, but do make that appointment with your priest and We'll be praying for this situation. Believe me, all of the Take-Two family around the world will keep you and your friend and all of this in their prayers. From Rome, this is Edward Pentin, correspondent for the National Catholic Register. This is Tracy Sable from EWTN News Nightly. I'm Jonah McKeown for the Catholic News Agency. Get trusted Catholic news every day on EWTN television and radio. The reason we pray is first, we owe God worship thanksgiving and adoration he created us and everything around us and prayer of praise and adoration is his due for giving us everything including the thought that we praise and in that thanksgiving we are made better for realizing what he does for us and now the ewtn family prayer with father joseph Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me, our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for the caregivers of the sick. O most holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we adore you. You have first loved us, and through your Son you have taught us the excellence of self-giving love. Give to those who are caregivers of a sick parent or child, brother or sister, the assistance of your holy angels. Lessen their burdens and give them great joy in practicing a work of mercy. And since charity is never forgotten by you, reveal to them their heavenly reward. Amen. Hi, this is Janet Williams. There's nothing like Women of Grace to explain the truth of our faith Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern here on EWTN Radio. Now, back to Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Glad you're with us here on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie and you on this uh, end of the week Friday broadcast all about relationships. Join us if there's one you would like to discuss, good, bad, ugly, whatever it may be. We can hopefully uh, all together come to a a place where you uh, can look at that relationship becoming uh, a little bit better if it needs that or whatever it may need. 833-288-3986. And just want to say quickly, um, again, the show team, Michael Birchfield, our producer, is on the controls. We have Charles Beery on social media. That would be Facebook and YouTube. You can post your comments there. And we have Rich Jesse on the phones. We do. Okay, we're going to go to Joan in Texas, listening on Guadalupe Radio Network. Hi, Joan. Thanks for waiting and welcome. Hello. Um, first, I just wanted to extend my condolences to you, Debbie. You've been in my prayers Thank for the loss you. of your mom. Thank you so and, much. Oh, you're so welcome. We, we all love you. And um, oh, my question is, um, how is a good Catholic supposed to deal with someone? And I hesit- I don't want to use, I hate, I don't want to use the word uh, narcissist because Dr. Ray says that that's very rare for someone to actually be a narcissist, but some people can have the trait. So let's say a manipulative person. Mm-hmm. Um, it may not be someone in your close immediate family, but it's somebody that you care about, someone that, you know, you've tried to be a friend to. And they sort of do this thing where they go back and forth from saying something nice and kind, and then mm-hmm. they'll say something mean and and punishing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so uh, it, it can go on yeah. for years. And, I mean, when they act kind, I return saying something in kind, and then later on they'll go back and say, you know, be mean. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so like as a Catholic, like, are we to respond? I know the Bible says 70 times seven. So every mm-hmm. time they come back and act in kindness, are we supposed to speak to them in kindness? I mean, this might sound like a really dumb question, but mm-hmm. I just need some guidance, sure. you know? Can Yeah. Can I go first, Jerry? Sure. Cause yeah. I, I deal with this all the time, Joan. So I kind of feel like I'm a little bit of an expert on it. <laughs> um, okay, so good. For, for, I need help. Yeah. First of all, I want to say you were so kind to say that that I am loved. I just want to say I love you back, Joan. So thank you so very Aww. much. Um, but uh, so here's the thing. When somebody has any type of, you know, I'm, I'm not big on labeling, but, uh, you know, you were you were talking about nar- narcissistic characteristics or socio sociopath or passive aggressive or whatever, whatever kind mm-hmm. of labels yes. that we want to put. The bottom line is the person is not really truly being genuine. OK, and so what mm-hmm. they're doing is they're nice at one moment and then they may have um, maybe some brain health issues or something. And so then something snaps and they change it, change direction or they're 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 self absorbed so much that they're not really seeing the big picture of it. It's a it's a it's uh-huh. a difficult relationship to be in, whether it's a family member or a friend or just even a coworker or, or a fellow mm-hmm. parishioner. It's a difficult position to be in. Now, I unfortunately have some of those types of situations in my big, bigger, uh, extended family. And, and what I've chosen to do, Joan, and I'm not saying you do, do what I do, but I, I talk to a lot of priests about it a lot, a lot of deacons that I respect. And they basically told me that I needed to, um, love them from a distance, love them from a healthy distance. Um, and, and, and forgiveness is about not holding them not, not holding them, um, you know, uh, tied down in the in the feelings of anger and resentment forgiveness is about letting them go freeing them and freeing yourself that's forgiveness forgiveness is not necessarily i forgive you go ahead and hurt me again it's not necessarily mm-hmm. that forgiveness is i'm i'm not going to hold on to the resentment anger and frustration i'm going to free you of that because it frees your soul to be a better person and it frees my soul so that i can go on in the journey so I've chosen to love from a healthy distance, and that has brought me tremendous peace, and I feel um, like I can... I can see them and observe them from a healthy distance where I'm not getting um, brutally uh, tortured internally in my heart from it. And so it's worked for me that way. I'm, I don't mm-hmm. say, I don't suggest that for everybody, but I just wanted to toss that out there and maybe see what Jerry has to say and see your response to that. Because I think sometimes we, in our good nature as Catholic Christians, we want to step in and fix it, right? We want to, we want to go mm-hmm. and make it better. And we, we can love them out of their, their, their tendencies and we can make them a better person. That's not how it works. We're all on a journey. Okay. We all have our own path and we're all, we're all w- working at different pace and a different speed. So I think the best thing we can do is do it in a healthy way, but from a distance. What do you think, Jerry or Joan? Joan, I'd love to hear your thoughts first. Okay. Um, I, that's what I've been trying to do. Uh, there are instances when I have to like interact sometimes, not have to, but it, like it happens where I have to interact with them. And so they'll say something and then I've always responded in kind. So I just don't know if, oh, uh, I don't know if I should keep doing that or just Right. Um, when you, probably when you, not, I'm guessing. Well, when you say respond in kind, so if they if they say something mean to you, how do you respond? I don't say anything mean back. I don't. Okay. I don't. Okay. Uh, when they do something mean, I don't respond at all. Okay. So you uh, don't. Let conf- me give you. Let me give you, you an example. Them. Like. Okay. Okay. Like. Um, no. Well, actually, I can't use that ex- example on the radio. But go ahead. Sure. Debbie, go ahead. But what you don't. Do? So, in other words, you don't confront them. Correct. You don't confront them in their behavior. No. No. Okay. Well, okay. We don't yeah, we don't see, have that that strong of a relationship where I could do that. So yeah, yeah. See, in this kind of case, it, it just me. And this is from what you're just sharing, right, Joan? I think you're you're best off kind of distancing yourself from it because it's not. It's something that seems like it's in a pattern, and it's and this person mm-hmm. needs to kind of realize that you know they're not going to hold on to a lot of friends and family members if this is their behavior. I mean, eventually well, see, when people this, are all alone, then they realize they're all alone. <laughs> but see, Debbie, this is the thing. They're not. They're, they have a lot of loving family and people around them. It's, it's, it's quite the opposite to that. So wow. it's very strange. 
Do they yeah. do they treat the other ones the same way, Joan? Do you know? Doesn't seem like it. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Yeah, well. I don't know. I mean, I don't know everything that's going on, of course, but no, it's it's just something um I have very strong intuition, you know, and uh, I've always I've always had that since I was a child, and so I can just sense it and uh, there's things I can't say on the radio why I think it's right. happening. Uh it's a personal thing that's going on. And so um but um I don't know could you before we close the call cuz I know there's other people, but I'm wondering uh, it, when, when I look up and I read stuff about people like that, it's so, it's so like sounds terrible because it says they're never going to change. Don't expect them to change. But yet as Catholics, we're supposed to believe that nothing's impossible with God. So, you know, can you just quickly touch on how do I pray? Like, do I pray for them to change or not? Is there a, pa- a patron saint? I mean, I can Google the patron saint for that. But also, mm-hmm. um, this is a, you know, I, I maybe other people listening out there. I mean, this is a person that seems very loved by many but for me oh yeah, that, yeah i have this i have this behavior coming at me so yeah no i understand we i have somebody in my extended family it's same thing very very popular with family members uh-huh. and this person is not yes. exactly a very um good natured person to certain people and so it's 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 unfortunate i i think I, this is just my personal opinion joan i think you got to protect yourself i would pray for that person protect yourself though so that you're not getting your dignity and your respect and your your uh, heart and your soul hurt just because this person feels like they have that kind of power N- no person has that kind of power on another person our you know mm-hmm. um y- you serve a very big god okay and he's the one with the power Hour, okay, and so we we can't let ourselves get totally, um, you know, sucked into people's drama when when they want to target certain people. So I would say, really, yes, I'm sure there is a, a saint for for narcissism. I'm sure there is. There's a saint for everything. But Joan, I'm I'm very curious about something. If you get a chance, would you email me at take two at ewtn.com? If you could just drop me an email, I, I just want to correspond with you for a moment because I I oh think my I'm. Goodness. If that's okay, go ahead. Yeah, take two. I was two. just going to ask you. I was just going to ask sure. you, but I know you guys have said before that you get so many emails that you can't find them. So I didn't know how you'd find me or not. So yeah, no, that's okay. Just drop me an email. Take two at ewtn dot com. It comes right to to me and Jerry, and and I'll, I'll happily respond because I think I think in your case, it's a distance is is really healthy. That's just what I what I would say. What okay. do you think? Yes, Jerry? and and. I would very much like to tell you the thing that I cannot say on sure. the radio, why yeah. I think it's going on. So maybe you could advise me better through email. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay, sure. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned the word target, Debbie. I think, Joan, you are a convenient target for this individual if they aren't treating you know, other members of their family or their friends the same way. So, But every time uh, you are treated, you know, Ill, you are ill-treated, Um, you know, uh, that is an opportunity for you to just quietly in your heart say, Lord Jesus, I receive this, I accept this in union with your suffering on the cross, Mm -hmm. you know, for the, you know, I guess, I don't want to say conversion of this person, but just that they would come to see the the pattern that they are exhibiting here and some of the ways that they're mistreating me and perhaps other people. So you can, you can turn those situations into opportunities for grace, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. Beautiful. Yep. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's I've been trying to do that. I just didn't know Good. if I was going the right way. So Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. are You're doing you great, guys. Joan. Mm, thank Aww, you. Thank love you. We love you too. Don't forget to email, okay? I am. I'm going to email you today. Thanks, okay. Joan. Thanks, Joan. Okay, all of our relationships today on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. We appreciate the patience of those of you on hold, and that would mean Aaron who is next in Denver listening on Sirius XM 130. Hi Aaron, welcome. Hi. <clears throat> Um, thanks for calling. Go, really, go right ahead. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I've been struggling with um, my husband for the last six months or so. Actually, it's been uh, like pretty much right after we got married. Um, we're both Catholic, and to me, marriage is marriage. And mm-hmm. um, to him, I realized afterwards he's traditional Catholic um, that the marriage that we had where we self solemnized didn't really count. Um, in his mind, I don't think, because he cheated on me um, in March um, of this year. And actually, he cheated on me before then as well. Um, and he has a porn addiction that I didn't know about. I mean, he, he presented himself as kind of like this perfect person who never watched porn. You know, 
enjoyed his religious upbringing. And since, you know, like shortly after we got married, it kind of came out like he lies about a lot of things. Um, He has this deep secret where part of his issue with his porn addiction and who he cheated on me with, um, transgender women. Um, and I, I'm still here because I believe that I met my marriage vows. Um, and speaking with my priest, he said, you know, I'm free. I can, I don't have to be with him. My first marriage was annulled. Um, I, I should just get out while I can. But at the same time, I've been reading things like, um, sacred marriage and how, marriage can make us better people. And I'm just, I am so confused because, Mm -hmm. you know, I try to advocate for myself to him when I say things like, I need to know what you're doing to work on yourself. And then we get in a huge fight and he tells Mm -hmm. me that I'm too emotional and I shouldn't be bringing this up. And I'm obviously not forgiving him if I'm still sad about him cheating on me. And I'm like, it was just five months ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. May I say something real quick? Are there children involved, Aaron? Unfortunately, that's the only reason why I haven't packed my bag and left. I have two kids with my previous marriage, and they're 10 and 16, and mm-hmm. my ex-husband is a hot mess. Um, he takes me to court all the time, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm just, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Okay, so so I have to say this only because I, I, we do a lot of this in our, our life coaching ministry. Um, uh, Aaron, please go to even CatholicCounselors.com. Get yourself some, some good professional counseling to advise mm-hmm. you. I would go back to that priest if you trust that priest. I would get a second priest and a third priest and a deacon, everybody else around you that can, that can in, in give you the confidence to make some good decisions for yourself. Because here's what happens. You get advice from professionals. Like like wonderful solid Catholic counselors, you get it. You get advice from priests that are great priests. You get advice from the church, and then you start reading books, and you get all confused, and you get all confused, and you start going in all these different directions. Okay, I you get it. Get a very sound professional spiritual team around you, Aaron, to make good decisions. Hear hear me out on this. Good decisions for your marriage, your future, your soul the kid's souls, his soul, okay? Take everything into account and make some sound um, decisions after much discernment on what the path forward is. Because if he has all of these problems and all of these situations happening and he is not getting the necessary um, tools and, and he's not looking to, to get out of it in a different way and grow out of it, you could be in for a lifetime of misery, so we, you have to really, you know, process this with a team around you. And I'm going to pray that your guardian angels are very active and that, and that people, God, the guardian angels put the right people in your path. But Aaron, please get a team around you. Jerry? Yeah, great advice from, from Debbie, Aaron. And I would just add, um, you know, it sounds pretty much like he's treating you like dirt and then turning things around on you and trying to make you feel like you're the problem. But, you know, it is not you. It sounds like he brought these things into the marriage. And unfortunately, this is not all that uncommon. Um, people want to present themselves as being, um, you know, respectful and, re- you know, respectable, I should say, and, and holy and upright and, you know, godly and all of that stuff. And sometimes that just turns out to not be the case. Um, I just feel like, you know, marriage prep is so important. I'm sure you went through it, but still, it's easy for someone to hide these kinds of things, unfortunately, and then when That's they right. come out. But Aaron, you know, it's, it's not a result of, you know, you didn't, you're not a bad cook. You don't clean the house well enough. You don't, you do the laundry well enough. You know, sometimes... I'm just saying that a spouse can start asking themselves the questions, what did I do wrong or what did I not do right? But it it sounds like, you know, none of that is the case for you here, Mm Erin. So I don't know. What do you think? I think I do cook well and I do all the laundry and the cleaning. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) I know. I think you're probably right. I need more religious support because I do see a really good counselor and a psychiatrist. And I really want the perspective from my Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. to come through because that's honestly where I start to get confused because I'll pray about it and I'll feel convicted and think maybe I don't talk to him good enough. Maybe I am disrespectful, but then I deal with 
my past relationships. And then I remember, no, this will take me down a really horrible road where that Mm -hmm. person never is accountable and I'm just Mm -hmm. an empty shell again. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing, Erin, it can be dangerous. Okay. If he goes outside of the marriage and he is having encounters with people outside of the marriage, whatever he picks up, okay, any, any disease or anything c- comes back into the, the house. <laughs> so this is, this is a da- this can be a dangerous situation. It's not just, oh, I made a choice to look at, you know, some, some porn, you know, videos or whatever. The, if he's going out there out and straying outside of the marriage, this is dangerous. This is dangerous for you. It's dangerous for the children. So yes, please, I'm begging you, get some strong spiritual support around you. Don't just go for one uh, person, go for two or three, you know, go and, and, and really get a team to be your, um, to help you discern what's the best path for you and the children. And this is for your eternity, not just for your, your earthly marriage here and what's happening here. This is for eternity. So it, 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 it can be done. You're not alone, Aaron. You're not alone. There's a reason you called because you're, you're, you must be feeling it deep inside your soul that something is, is terribly wrong. Yeah, I am. Okay. Thank you so much for all of your advice. I appreciate it very much. All right, thank you for calling, and we'll be praying fervently with you, Aaron, which I know you're doing, and all of the Take Two family will join you in prayer as well. Um, We just got an email um, for uh, in uh, giving some assistance to Joan with her call. I had looked this up online, and I I, I neglected to mention it. The patron saint of um, the narcissists, she was wondering who to pray to, um, Saint Dymphna. This is not a really well-known saint, but a lot of it's people for do know. brain health issues. Yeah, mm-hmm. brain health issues. And mm-hmm. So it's, it's D-Y-M-P-H-N-A. St. Dymphna is somebody that you can pray to, Joan, uh, regarding that friend that you were talking about. Um, before we go to other calls, Debbie, I just want to mention that Register Radio is tomorrow afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, amid a wave of new COVID-19 vaccine mandates being rolled out by businesses and institutions. Catholics who morally object to the vaccines are finding themselves at odds with those who think the ethical obligation to protect public health should trump conscience conscience rights. So on this week's episode of Register Radio, Joseph Meany of the National Catholic Bioethics Center offers guidance for Catholics to wade through the issues in play and make properly informed decisions for their own health and the good of society. That's uh, Register Radio tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern Time on many of these same EWTN stations. And Aaron, if you're still listening, you can email us, take2 at EWTN.com. We're here to help you if we can. Um, Martin is up next in San Antonio, Texas, also living, uh, living, <laughs> also listening. Um, you're living in San Antonio. You're listening on Guadalupe Radio Network. Hi, Martin. Welcome. Hello. Hi, Debbie. Hi. So my What's cooking? Let's go to you and your family. Uh, for Thank your you. Loss. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, uh, I started a relationship uh, with this woman in February, and it was in social media. And uh, for the last, for the first month, it was going pretty good. You know, I was there to help her out. Then I started getting some signs from her uh, on the texting of me that uh, she felt like she's an orphan and she's nobody without me. Those kind of signs. And, and I continued, uh, and then it started to get kind of spiraling down. Uh, she was talking you know, real down about herself, and, mm-hmm. and generally in everything that she was speaking about. So I continued to distance myself a little bit, give her some space, so that way she could figure out what she wants to do with her life. So I continued to support her. And now that it's come to the six months already, in this uh, relationship, I have uh, basically shut it off, kind of like leave it alone. And she still constantly comes every once in a while to text with me. And I just don't know where to go with it. I need your input on this. Is this somebody you want to um, have a future with, Martin? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yes, I do. Oh, so you do want to be with her? You said you do? Okay. So if you do want to be with her, you guys need to get some professional help. She needs some... See, see people are... They don't... 
people will go to therapy or to counselors or to life coaches and that they think they just get enough that they can get by and it's it doesn't it doesn't solve a lot of future situations i again if you're martin if you're catholic i would go to catholiccounselors.com i would get some professional help for you and her as a as a couple if you're dating so that if you're seeing red flags now martin they're only going to get worse the, when people think that it gets better as time goes on, it doesn't. It just rises its ugly head in another way. And so g- there's a reason that you're seeing these things now. These, To me, this is your, th- in my personal opinion, this is your guardian angel saying, Martin, do you see this? Martin, do you see this? Do you see this? And And so you have the capability now to do something about it so that it can produce a good future for you and her if that's what God is calling the two of you uh, to do as a couple. But you know what? Here's the thing. Some Most people, Martin, just to let you know, they ignore the red flags. They ignore the, the signs because they think as time goes on, they can love through anything. Now, that is true. With God, all things are possible and love conquers all. That is true. However, when you have signs that are showing up over and over again, there's a real issue there that needs to be addressed. What do you think, Jerry? No, I, well, I, I agree with what you're saying. You know, love is blind, as the saying goes. And I think uh, Debbie's advice is very, very good, Martin. Definitely um, get some professional help with this and um, be, try to be as objective as you can be. Um, you know, when we're, um, when we're in a situation, a relationship like you are in right now, you said you want to see it um, develop and grow and, and you would like to be with this person perhaps for the rest of your life. Um, that, that's a big step. That's a very serious thing. And you can't leave these things um, un, you know, you can't leave these things to, to just go on. And like Debbie said, you know, think you can love your way through it. Possibly you can, but, um, I think you just, you would, you, you would do well to look into these things, discuss them professionally, discuss them with her and, uh, make sure that you don't, uh, find yourself in, you know, a marital situation perhaps that is very unfulfilling and unfruitful and, and actually very unhealthy. So I, I just agree with what Debbie said. What do you think, Martin? Yeah, well, yeah, I believe in all that. Uh, I'm a very loving, sincere person. You know, I I really much are sincere about my feelings towards this person, and I I hope they feel the same way. It's just right now I'm just distancing myself right now. Uh, I I need to prioritize myself, and maybe the same party has to do the same thing too. Yeah, very possibly. Okay, Martin, thank you. We'll pray for you in that situation. Um, Mary in Reseda, California, we are up against the uh, the music to end the program in about 20 seconds here. If you would like to email us, you can do so at take2 at EWTN.com. And, uh, you know, as has been referenced on this show, we do get a lot of email that we sometimes can't answer all of them. But if, if we see an email coming through from you, Mary, we'll definitely offer you some thoughts on that. So, again, that's take2 at EWTN.com. What do we get uh, going for Monday? You put that on the calendar Tell about being free in the Catholic Church. Share with us what you meant by that. Well, no, I mean, a lot of people um, go off onto sinful lifestyles and patterns, and then they say, look, I'm finally, I'm free to be me. You know, I'm finally myself. I have discovered myself. The problem is you've lost yourself. Do you know anybody who says, you know, they justify a sinful lifestyle or an ungodly way of living? And then they say, "Ah, look, I'm finally free. I'm free to be me. Do you know anybody like that? That's what we're going to talk about on Monday's show. Hope that that suffices. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting show. That's on Monday. So until Monday, uh, all of us here at at, at EWTN, and of course, uh, Jerry and I want to wish you a beautiful and blessed weekend. And in the year of St. Joseph, we ask St. Joseph, please pray for us. See you real soon. Amen.